In a recent video, I damaged the CD4017 chip in one of my project boards, and so I had to go and find some replacements. When hunting around on AliExpress, I saw this little kit, which contains a CD4017 for just 86 pence, so I couldn't resist adding it to my basket. So let's look inside and see what this kit does. So no instructions in this kit this time, but we do have a nice printed PCB with all of the details of all of the components we need to install, including the aforementioned CD4017. So let's turn on the soldering iron and get started. So we have a variety of different colored LEDs, some resistors, a CD4017 and its socket, a transistor or other three pin silicon device, a couple of electrolytic capacitors in different sizes, and this is a microphone. So this particular kit has a variety of bright LEDs on the front, and when you make a sound, they flash in interesting patterns. So I thought this would be a really fun project for us to assemble. The first thing I need to do is identify my four resistors and install them on the board. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I've managed to install all of the basic components, uh, including the microphone, which you may have noticed I put the section with the three prongs, which connected to the casing of the microphone, in the direction that had the three prongs on the schematic symbol as well. Now, for the rest, we need to put in the LEDs. And as you know, I've had some pretty poor luck with LEDs of late, so I decided to take a little bit of a note from the design in the AliExpress listing to make sure the LEDs all go in the right places. As we have no paperwork here, I thought this was pretty important. Now, I don't suspect it actually makes any difference, but I've been bitten by that decision before, so I'm gonna put them in in this exact layout.
Okay, so I desoldered these connections here by hand just to double check if they were supposed to be shorted. And it seems these two pads indeed do make contact, so I don't think there's anything I would be able to do about that even if I wanted to. I'm not so convinced about these ones here though. I do believe I've managed to keep them isolated. But I suspect that pads that close together probably are intended to connect anyway. What I could do is desolder just those two again and see if they're naturally connected. So maybe I will give that a go. So hopefully you can see that there is some isolation between those pads. Let's give it a check with the multimeter. Okay, so even with the clearance, it does appear that they are shorted. So I'm gonna go ahead and resolder those and not worry too much about any bridges. Okay, they are resoldered for the third time. So it looks like they are still independent though. So we'll see how that works. The last thing I need to do is add some wires for the power. And I've got some pre-tinned ones just here. Okay, so this is our CD4017. I think we should pop it in the board and see if it works. So I've got my power supply here set to 4.5 volts. According to the directions, it's a five volt board, but hopefully that will do for us now. So let's connect things up and see what happens. And there we go. As we add an audio signal, the lights dance round. So if we tap very gently, we might be able to get them to go around one at a time. So I'm pleased to see that's working and hopefully the LEDs here line up with my diagram, which is yellow, red, blue, and then another yellow, very faint one, but yellow, white, green, red, blue, green, and white. So there we go. And there we go, we can see that one is indeed yellow. Oh, and when I touch the pins on the back there, it seemed to cause a little bit of a short. There we go, how exciting. So I hope you found this little video interesting, and I hope to speak to you again soon in the next one.